The reason why we're held back from doing what we want to do is because of what people think about what we do. Hey, you want to grow your YouTube channel? You want to grow your Instagram? We'll want you to document the journey. Good morning, everyone. It's Monday, 4.43, and we are on our way to the gym. Breakfast done, kids are at school. Monday, we've got a lot of work to get done today. There's something that I heard on one of my favorite businessmen nowadays. Businessman, vlogger, podcaster, social media guru, uh, Gary Vee. He was talking with uh, a real estate agent by the name of Ryan Sarhart, probably one of the number one agents in New York City. And, and so they were talking about YouTube and they were talking about social media and he asked a question that I talked to you guys about last week. The question was, Hey Gary, did you think that YouTube was gonna be this big for you or for everyone, for the world? And his thing was like, yeah. He said, look, YouTube is very important, very crucial for the real estate business. For every every business, but especially for the real estate business. And he, and he elaborated on that, he said, look, through YouTube, through this platform, you can deliver the home buying process through a video or a vlog. That's true, so essentially that's what I wanna do today. I wanna walk you through, I wanna give you, hmm, what do I say, I wanna give you a, an inside look as to what happens on a pre-approval, right, from beginning to end. So I'm gonna see if I can do that. I'm really gonna try my best. Uh, I know I've been trying to do this for quite some time now, but today I will give it a crack. First, let's get out of here. Ugh. So, <laughs> um, so word of advice, yeah. if um, you're in this position where you didn't get to close on time and you know your rate expired and you need to extend, extend. Whether or not you're going to move forward with the transaction, cover your... Cover yourself. Cover yourself. <laughs> 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 okay guys, if you like how Claudia explained the advantages and disadvantages of your uh, relocking. Give this video a thumbs up, guys, please. Kaya and I would be very pleased with a thumbs up. Right, Kaya? <laughs> okay, so, like I mentioned earlier, right, I'm gonna walk you through the whole pre-approval process. Earlier, we talked about the benefits of locking your loan. It's important you know how long you're locking your loan for, and you're locking your loan for X amount of days. It's either seven, 15 days, 30 days, 45 days, know that the longer you lock the loan, the more expensive it becomes, right? So essentially what locking your loan means is that you are guaranteed or the lender will guarantee you that rate for 30 days if you were to lock it for 30 days, 15 days if you were to lock it for 15 days. What that means is that whatever happens in the marketplace, that's your rate. Whether the market crashes, whether the market goes up, whether the market goes down, that's your rate, okay? Uh, now, let's just suppose that you can close your loan because the seller is not in a position, like this particular case that we were talking about earlier. Well, then at, at that point, you have to extend your rate, right? You don't wanna rate, let your rate expire, so you wanna be on top of that. My team, me as a loan officer, we're on top of that. You don't want the rate to expire because if you do, it's going to cost you relock fee associated with that. That can run you anywhere from thirteen to fifteen hundred dollars. And extending your rate, in most cases, it costs approximately zero point zero two percent of the loan amount. In this case, we locked it in for approximately 10, 11 days. So it's about 770 bucks more or less. Now, paying $770 is much better than paying the relock fee, which is like 700, which is like 1500 bucks, I believe, more or less. So right now, I'm gonna walk you through the whole pre-approval. So I'm glad I was able to touch on that, touch on the whole 
rate locking a little bit more. Now I'm gonna move on and talk to you guys about about the pre-approval. Okay, so I was talking to the so this agent that we work with um, referred me this borrower, and uh, so I'm gonna make sure that I already have this borrower in my database. It's not in the database, so I'm gonna add her. Subway. Oh, dude, that's awesome. So. Doesn't their bread smell so good? All right, cool. So I don't know if this lady owns the property. So the first thing I'm gonna do is verify that the property she lives in right now isn't the property that she that that that's the property that she owns. So she does own this property. She owns this property with her husband. So yeah, I'm just making a note of everything double checking cross-referencing everything very easy to miss anything it's very to miss it's very easy to miss anything so uh, I've been doing this for way too long I'm not gonna let that happen to me see so I just ran her credit so I verified her I mean I've looked at her income just quick glance and income checks out second thing I haven't calculated her income right or I haven't seen if she qualifies for this property but I see that based on her income and for what she wants to buy that we can do something right so the second thing I did was I ran her credit and the lady has an FICO score all right she has three different FICO scores with transient she has Equifax she has and with Experian she has out of those three, we're not going to go off of the numerically highest FICO score because that's unfair. We're not going to go off of the numerically lowest FICO score because also that's unfair. So we're going to go off of the numerically mid FICO score. And that when I say we're going to go off of, like that's just in general how the mortgage world sees or how they apply or how they take, how they factor what FICO score they're going to use, okay? What I meant was that was an outstanding FICO score. It's very rare that I come across anything like that. If anything, maybe like one or two FICO scores of that caliber a year. So good job, borrower. So next thing is I'm going to review the credit, see if they have any public records, which they don't. $271 of monthly liabilities, which is good. So she provided her tax returns, W-2s. In this case, she works for the, uh, she works for so I would only need tax on uh, W-2s. So what I'm looking for in this pay stub, the first thing I want to identify are her deductions. Does she have any 401k loans? Does she have, does she make child support? None of this stuff. So the second thing I want to do is I want to look at her year-to-date earnings. Okay, I've got her income outlined. I've got her expenses. Hello. Okay, so I just confirmed. So basically, I mean, I can do this deal based on what she's telling me, right? So her husband bought this property, Mr. her husband bought this property back in 2013, recently refinanced the property in 2016 and 2017. He then added her to the title. She's not on the loan, okay? She lives rent free. We could retail lending, so we can do this deal. Okay, so I'm done with this pre-approval. It's pretty simple. So the income checks out, and the credit checks out, outstanding credit. Here's the thing though, though, they wanna buy this property that's worth $375,000 and they only have $30,000 to play with. Um, minimum down payment on an investment property is 15% down. So 15% of that would have been like close to $60,000. So they have half of that. You're just not gonna be able to do it, right? Call the borrower and let them know. All right, so I called the borrower. She's not there, so um, I left her voice still. 6.29, and I will tell you, it feels very good to be home. Bro, I'm having dinner now. Um, 